Happy Easter to each and every one of you. It's uh, something very special to mention this morning beside the fact that we have two new saints, uh, Pope St. John Paul II and St. John the 23rd. What an incredible gift we have been given in these two wonderful leaders today. And we can learn a lot from them in the years to come by studying their writings and reflecting upon them. But also today, right here in the cathedral, we have a wonderful uh, time to celebrate, today especially, because one of the pillars of our church, one of our parishioners, today marks the 107th birthday of Agnes Dahl, who's here with us in the front row. Agnes, can you stand up a second? <laughs> when I came here uh, uh, almost six years ago, now I met Agnes, one of the first people I met here, and I said, uh, she told me her age right away, and I said, wow, that is something. She says, oh, I'm just getting started. <laughs> <laughs> so Agnes, congratulations, a very happy birthday to you. God bless you, and thank you for your membership here at the cathedral and your great love and devotion to the cathedral parish. I'd like to thank you and my sister, on behalf of my sister Carol and myself, for all of your prayers during my brother Mark's recent uh, very serious illness. I was not with you for Holy Week, and I apologize for that, but I felt it more important that I be right next to my brother in his last days on earth. And it was truly a blessed time. Uh, I don't know if you know, my brother was a superintendent of schools and had a good career, but he retired early. And in the last few years of his life, he devoted much of his time to prayer. In fact, he was very devoted to the divine mercy. He had started reading the diary of St. Faustina, and for six years, for two hours every day, he prayed for the souls who were on their deathbed that day, those people on their deathbed that day that they can open their mind and heart to receive the loving mercy of Jesus. Can you imagine that? All those people who were dying on that particular day, my brother interceded for to our Lord Jesus of mercy and asked for the grace for them to be able to accept this mercy and love that Jesus pours out constantly to all of us who are in this journey of life. So I am so grateful to my brother and I tell you, he had a very beautiful and peaceful death. Now I know what St. Joseph means when he says, pray for a happy death. We pray to St. Joseph often for that gift. My brother uh, died on uh, Monday of Holy Week at 1.48 in the afternoon. He was buried on Tuesday of Easter week, and here now is Divine Mercy Sunday, which he was so dedicated to. I might share with you that just before he passed away, all of his family was right there with him, including my sister and myself, and his daughter said a beautiful prayer over him just before he died. And then right before he died, I was able to say to him, Mark, if Jesus is calling you, you have our permission to go to him, so don't hold on because of us. Please go to him. And then I said a final prayer over him in thanksgiving for his life. I ended my prayer with the word, Amen, and that was his very last breath. When I said Amen, he took his very last breath. There was a beautiful peace in the room, a beautiful surrender into God's hands. And now I know from firsthand experience what a beautiful death looks like. And I'm so glad that Jesus of divine mercy gave mercy to my brother who could have had a very long protracted battle with cancer. He was loaded with cancer, found out only on Ash Wednesday. And uh, so it was really quite a journey, but a beautiful journey. Today we celebrate that gift of divine mercy. This is called Divine Mercy Sunday. And according to St. Faustina, who was in regular communication with Jesus and wrote it all down in her diary, Jesus Christ, risen from the dead, is desperate to give his love and mercy to people. But it's as Pope Francis said a few months ago, it's not that Jesus is cheap with his mercy, it's that we are stingy in approaching and asking him for the gift of love and mercy. 
And so the Pope encourages us to approach the throne of divine mercy and completely let God forgive us and ask him for the grace to forgive ourselves as well. Often it's that we can't forgive ourselves. It's not that God doesn't forgive us. It's not necessarily that others don't forgive us. It's that we often cannot forgive ourselves. So don't be somebody who's stingy in asking for forgiveness and mercy. Approach the throne of God's grace and mercy and let the risen Christ pour out his love into your heart, into your family. Don't let any obstacle of sin or any other kind of distraction get you off course from your purpose here in life. Your purpose and my purpose is to prepare ourselves for heaven and be ready to go at any time whenever Jesus might call us. For some, like dear Agnes, she's had a long, long journey. For others, like my brother, it was only 64 years, but all of this is in the mind and the wisdom of God, and you try to figure that out and you'll be a lot better off than I am. We don't know God's mysterious ways of thinking, but we accept it because that is in his holy and divine will. What a beautiful day we have today as Catholics because two of our popes are saints. They became saints today. Isn't that incredible? You know, now probably not every pope is in heaven. You might think, well, the higher the position, the more inroads you got into heaven. Not necessarily. People who have, uh, you know, insights into purgatory and into hell, and some people have even spiritually visited those places. There's plenty of priests and bishops down there too, I'm sorry to say. For some reason, they must not have been accessing the graces that Jesus gave to them. Well, we know that these two have made it to heaven. Probably the others have too, most of them, but these two for sure now we know have made it to heaven. They are officially declared to be in the heavenly glory of Jesus Christ in the heavenly kingdom. John Paul was a big pusher of divine mercy. His first encyclical was about Jesus full of mercy. And he's the redeemer who is full of mercy. And so this seems to be the theme of our age. John the 23rd called the Second Vatican Council, which changed our church dramatically. His goal was not to change all kinds of structures and things like that, but he wanted to open the doors of the church to let out the stale air and to welcome in the fresh air. Sometimes that air might not be quite as fresh today as it was before, but we are definitely open to communicating with the modern world, with the world in which we live, with our contemporary situation, and to communicate the message of the gospel. So I think our Holy Father, Pope Francis, was saying that with these two saints who were former popes, he is saying to us, every person is important. Each one of these leaders of our church was a great shepherd of the church, and each one somehow wanted to promote the mercy of the Holy Gospel, the mercy of Jesus Christ. And we are silly and foolish if we do not take advantage of that mercy and let other people know about Christ's divine mercy. In the new evangelization, you and I are asked to tell people about Jesus, to invite them into relationship with Jesus Christ. Far too long, Catholics have been way too timid about that. And so now, all the people in your family, your relations, your friends, your working associates, don't be afraid to share about Jesus Christ and what he means in your life. Jesus, because of the resurrection, Jesus is alive, he's well, and he's right here walking with you and me every day. All we have to do is keep our eyes focused on him, keep our path smooth and clear, offer our sufferings and our sacrifices for divine love, and then we can be an instrument of God's grace for the people in our lives. You have that right and that responsibility which comes from your baptism and your confirmation. So ask yourself, how many people have I introduced to Jesus Christ? How many people have I told them about his love? How many people are just squandering away their lives? They're lost, they're confused. They have no one to give them the gift of truth that says you can have your, your whole life 
in proper order and in proper relationship with God. All you have to do is give your life to God and let him run your show, which is your life. Let God be God. God is the God. He is the master of our lives. It is not us. We think we're in control of our life. We think we're in control of what God has given us. That's an illusion. But we are asked to give good order to our personal lives, to our lives in ministry, as Father John and I know. And to give proper order is something very, very important. But there's only one person who's really in control, especially when we recognize that, and that is Jesus Christ himself. To him we owe the honor and the glory. And on this Divine Mercy Sunday, this second Sunday after Easter, we give thanks for his tremendous love and mercy. He has died and is still dying to pour out his love and mercy upon the whole world. But the world rejects him. The world wants no part of him. People say, oh yeah, come close to me, Jesus. It's like this, come close to me. I'll give my life to you. Yeah, come on in. And yet they keep their arms extended and they keep him at arm's length or even farther away by their choices and by their actions. That's what sin does to us. It keeps us separated from God. It keeps him out there and we live our own little life and we hope it pleases him. Huh? He doesn't want to do life that way with us. He wants our lives to be his life, for him to be the Lord and master of our life, for us to give our lives into his hands for his direction. I am so proud of my brother because he shared his soul with me. He told me the truth and his soul was in tip top shape. I hope that when my time comes that I'm able to have the same kind of rapport with our Lord as my brother had in his last months and years. What a blessing. And I wish that for each and every one of you. When Jesus calls you by name, may your soul and your life be in tip-top shape. And it gets into tip-top shape because you let the mercy of Jesus into your mind and heart and you're ready in humility to receive him totally. It is no longer I who live, it is Christ who lives in me. May Almighty God bless and keep you the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.